let's look at <coughs> another example here. We want to factor this polynomial. Again, first step is always determine what are the possible values. So the possible values in this case, well, we can take the factors of the first one, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and then we're going to have plus or minus 1 half and plus or minus 3 halves. And what's going to always happen here is we're going to have 1 and negative 1 are always going to be a possible factor. That's just the way the mathematics works out. So let's check, again, let's try the positive 1 and let's check P1. So when we put 1 in our polynomial, let's see what we get for our remainder. 2 times 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 10 times 1 minus 3 is going to equal 2 minus 9 plus 10 minus 3. Oh, and I hope we're getting happy here because negative 9, negative 3 is negative 12 plus 12 is going to equal 0. Now, it doesn't always work that one's a factor, but we just happen to have a couple that one's a factor here. So now we go to our remainder theorem. Or sorry, it's a synthetic division, I should say. Our remainder theorem is told us the remainder is zero. Write our coefficients. Two, negative nine, ten, and three. And we start doing synthetic division. Two times one is two. Nine, negative nine plus two is negative seven. Negative 7 plus times 1 is negative 7. 10 minus 7 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. And i got to write my coefficients right because I know this remainder has to be equal to 0. Because plus, plus 1 worked, x minus 1 is the factor. So that means we have x minus 1. And again, these tell you the coefficients of the new quadratic. It was cubic. It drops down 1 degree. 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Now we got to factor this quadratic. Now, remember we could do decomposition here, and there's nothing wrong with doing decomposition, but we, if we can find two numbers that multiply to 6, 2 times 3, and add to negative 7, we know it can be factored. And of course, there are two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 7, negative 6 and negative 1. So this thing can be factored. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to do a bit of a trial, or guess and check, I guess you should say. I know to get 2x squared, I need x and I need a 2x. And I know to get positive 3, I need both numbers to be negative, because I'm going to be negative here. So it has to be negative 3 and negative 1. Now, it's just a matter of which ones we put in here. And we just want to try and determine where we put the negative 1 and where we put the negative 3 in order to get negative 7. And just a couple of trials, we can just say, well, we know to get negative 7, we have to go 2 times negative 3. And that would make this negative 1. And if we check that, if we multiply the outside terms, we're going to get negative 6x. Multiply the inside terms, we're going to get negative 1. Add those together, we're going to get negative 7. There it is in factored form. So fairly straightforward, once we have determined what these possible values are, what gives us a remainder of equal to 0, there's our binomial, and then we factor our quadratic. Now, if you got down and there was a cubic here, you would just go again. You would start again, you would take out that factored binomial, and you would just keep going through. So you can factor now a cubic, a quartic, a sanctic, I don't know what five is, and you just keep going through. 